And so thanks very much, Roger. And uh, as you said, uh, my name is Michael Wallace, and I'm the Executive Director of Theatre Museum Canada. And I'd like to thank the Badashu Museum for uh, allowing us to be here today. And also thank Mrs. Bada for starting this small museum, because it's a museum like this that eventually we want to be. Uh, and it's nice as well to see, in discussions in the past, we thought we should have a room where we can have panel sessions like this with about 50 people attending. So I think now we know it should be a little bigger than that, the room. Um, but I'd just also like to thank the Badis, because I think this is a, it's a bit of an inspiration for us. Uh, and it's eventually what we want to be. But at the moment, uh, or in the meantime, we do, uh, we're preserving the country's performing arts heritage. Uh, we're celebrating it with some of the, our oral history project, which you can visit online at our website. And then we're also sort of exploring some of the issues uh, in the performing arts with panels like this. Uh, and so that's, those are some of the things that we're doing today. Uh, also, some of the things we're trying to do today are get it better at the things that we do do, so, which is why you have the uh, feedback forms. And if you could, not while we're all talking, uh, but sometime today, if you could take a minute just to fill those out, because we find that the feedback's been terrific. And I think those of you who've been to a number of these will hopefully agree that this one is better than the ones we did earlier on, because we're learning a whole bunch of things based on the uh, event feedback forms. So thanks very much. 
enough of that. Um, one of the things I have always found really neat about theater are the, I would call them almost odd specialties that people have. Uh, and it's an industry that hires shoemakers, for instance. Uh, so I thought it would be kind of an interesting uh, conversation for us to find out a bit more about shoes uh, as they relate to the stage. And so I was very happy that Jeff was able to join us today um, because there aren't a lot of shoemakers. Uh, so it worked out very well that he could be part of the panel. Uh, and then Sean Kerwin, who's a uh, designer, will be offering that perspective, I hope. Uh, and then David Storch, who's a, design, a director and actor, hiding those perspectives. So what we're gonna start off with is a, is a few questions that we sort of shared uh, ahead of time, and then we'll open it up to questions from the floor. If that works for everyone. Uh, and our first question is, I'm just asking if you could talk a bit about what, when you first know what a pair of shoes will look like. And maybe if Sean and David could start off with that, because I could get a sense of what the shoes might look like first. Sure. I, well, I, I'll jump in because the yep. process, I guess normally the process in working on a production is that the director and the designer, so I'm looking at you as an actor, but you can be the director if you want. That's right. Um, <laughs> That the director and the designers, the costume designer, set designer, lighting designer, all get together to discuss the kind of general concepts behind the show. Um, I don't know, why don't you put your director hat on? Well, of course, it varies character by character. If the character is a, for example, uh, wears a uniform, then it's a ma simple matter of research, and sometimes a very simple matter of research. Once you've verified the, the era of the costume, the, uh, you know, the, 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 the costume design, then you can refer to textbooks, and if it's a recent thing, you can you could buy soldiers' boots at uh, army surplus or online or something. Once you go back into the Napoleonic era, it becomes a little bit more difficult. So you're either finding things that will fake properly, they'll they'll look right, or you have to turn to someone who has specialized expertise and can build your shoe. And I think for me, as a, I'm a costume designer and a set designer, so if I'm doing sets and costumes for a show, then I'm thinking first of all about who the characters are, that um, from a costume design point of view you have to nab the characters. Uh, uh, from a set designer point of view you have to think about the surfaces that actors are walking on and how those things are going to relate to each other. So I know for me in my conversations with the director, if we are clear about the world that the play is taking place in, then when you start looking at a character by character by character situation, um, it would be up to me to be able to sort of present to David uh, my ideas for what I think those characters might look like, and then we would have a dialogue about that. In terms of the shoes and your question, I know for me at that stage early on, I'm very aware of footwear because I think that it's one of the most important parts of an actor's costume. And one of the really important parts of the thinking of that is what is the contact between the actor's foot hitting the surface and the surface I'm designing that they're gonna walk on. So if you have somebody wearing high heel shoes on a hard surface, that's going to make a noise. This is for the microphones. Um, if you have someone wearing running shoes on a hard surface, that's going to make a different noise. If you have someone walking in high heels on carpet, that's going to make a different noise. So, so there's the element of what the character is and what should be right for them, and then there's how they integrate and make contact with the surfaces that I provide as a designer and. Um, so I guess that's the very first part. And then hopefully in our conversations, um, you don't even know that I'm thinking of that. Um, <laughs> you just say, yes, this is the right character, and yes, this is the right set. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and for talking, like, maybe in, in early sketches, looking at colors of shoes or, or basic silhouette, like, well, there's a big heel or a big shoe, or like, a shoe that makes some sort of statement, that, that might catch your eye, but otherwise, like, watching people walk past on the street, you might not notice their shoes unless they are of particular interest. And I, and I think also, as I look at David as an actor, then I'm thinking, okay, what is the footwear gonna do for that person's posture? And how are they gonna carry themselves? Because 
the height of a heel will totally alter David's posture and how he carries himself. Uh, and that it has to be a choice that is so inevitable uh, that when the actor is actually wearing their costume, you're not drawn attention, you're not being drawn to it. Um, that to me it should be invisible, essentially, because the actor's job is is to present something. It's not really about my job. It's my job to support what the actor's got to do. And and it's really interesting because when you when you work with different actors, um, and you you talk about what their footwear is. I mean, it, it's profound whether they're wearing sneakers or whether they're wearing hard shoes. Like that's a profound difference in every gesture from the ground up. It, is. it affects your posture, your center of balance, uh, center of gravity, sorry, your, your, your balance, your, your sense of self too. If you just think how different you feel uh, in a pair of in bare feet, a pair of slippers, a pair of sandals, a pair of dress shoes, winter boots, combat boots, running shoes, they, 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 they change the way you feel about yourself and the way you, as Sean says, contact the earth, uh, the way you move around. And very often there are uh, practical questions coming from actors too, well before you get to fittings. You know, if the director has said, I really want you to like jump over the table at that point in, in the script, then probably someone's going to put that in production notes, hoping the designer will see it, so that we, uh, we have worked out all the issues about whether or not it's possible to do that in the high heels you've given that actor. Or, <laughs> or, or is it a feature yeah. that they can do it? No, 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 <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. Uh, and then the, the, Michael touched on, or Mike, Michael mentioned odd jobs in the sense of unusual or strange, and Sean touched briefly on safety. Um, it, it is a weird way to make a living. It's a strange thing that we do, uh, at, at acting, making theater. And even in a play where you just have a couple people sitting in chairs, walking around a table, coming in from the wings, and going back out. No dance sequences, no fight sequences. It's common practice to rubberize the bottom of shoes because uh, for, for the same reason that, any, I guess anything that can go wrong will go wrong, but also the stage is a place where people tend to break the glasses they're saying cheers with. You don't see that a lot in real life. <laughs> uh, and, and between uh, performance anxiety and performance uh, adrenaline and performance energy, people do tend to slip and fall in a way they just don't tend to do in real life. So shoes become an issue that way, safety. And I think, I mean, for instance, often you could be working on raked floors. So if you're working on a raked floor, not only are you dealing with the sort of inevitability of gravity, but uh, it's also back issues. Uh, that it's very hard for actors on their backs to work on a raked floor because they're constantly, well, you could probably talk about that better than I could. So, so what's on their feet is also going to have an impact on how their whole body is pitched in relation to the raked floor. And yet sometimes having a raked floor is a very valuable choice to make for a particular production. And then if you have a raked floor that's got a shiny, glossy, slippery surface, uh, you know, there's, there's, there's so many different layers of, of choices you can make could affect how they move. And, and I think David's point about rubbering shoes is really important because you have to be able to, you have to have absolute control, I think. My confidence, yeah. All the time. And then, so once you've made these choices about what the shoes are gonna look like, then you communicate with the craftspeople and the artists. Yes. How does that happen? Uh, well, normally, I guess, um, should we be so lucky as to be in a position where we can do that? Because a lot of the companies, a lot of the companies can't afford to get custom-made shoes. But unless they're very, very, very special, like in Sleuth, for instance, you have to have the clown shoes that get put on, and they have to be wearable. So if you're making a, you know, if you need a pair of shoes that long, you can't just go and buy them in a joke shop. You call up Jeff. Um, so the costume designer would then uh, do some drawings. Uh, 